Can I extend a very warm welcome to you uh, this morning from wherever you're tuning in from. Um, symbolically, we've opened the door here, whereas in reality, um, the majority of our churches are closed at this time. But that being said, through the wonders of technology, we're able to join you in your own homes. And can I encourage you at the beginning of this season of Lent to uh, tune in to the various different services that we have planned, in particular on Wednesday nights there's a short reflection based around the ancient uh, service of Compline which is a service that Christians have used for for almost 2,000 years and uh, a short reflection uh, just to close our day. You'd be very welcome to come to that but anyway uh, I'm going to hand over now to uh, Malcolm who's going to lead us in our service. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. We've come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving to hear and receive God's holy word to seek the forgiveness of our sins and to pray for the needs of the world that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth will proclaim your praise. Let us worship the Lord, all praise to his name. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy, to you be praise and glory forever in the darkness of our sin. Your light breaks forth like the dawn and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon our path. O Lord, your word is everlasting. It stands firm forever in the heavens. Let us then receive the word of the Lord. So may the light of your presence shine into our hearts. Now Reverend Isaac is going to come and read to us from God's word. Thank you. Today's Gospel reading is from Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, and I'm going to read from verse 9. 
It's a passage uh, which describes the baptism and then the temptation of Jesus. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven been torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the desert, and he was in the desert for 40 days being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and the angels attended him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So as we begin uh, uh, our reflection on today's reading, let's uh, begin with prayer. So Heavenly Father, may I teach from your word in such a way that we can hear your voice and in hearing your voice, apply all that you want to say to us, to our own lives, for your glory's sake. Amen. In Russia, uh, they, uh, they have a, a whole uh, range of different heroes that they look to for inspiration. And one of, the, one of them was uh, a ruler called Ivan the Terrible, who got his name for all sorts of um, uh, reasons. Uh, and I suspect that the chief reason was that he was a ferocious opponent and warrior and uh, known for his brutality. Uh, he spent much of his life on campaign, capturing countries uh, and regions uh, for, uh, to, uh, for him to add on to his own country. 
So much so that in fact he had no time to find a wife and uh, at that time if you had no wife of course you had no heir and then it created an awful lot of instability. So his advisors came to him and said look Ivan uh, you, uh, w w you, you maybe need to consider uh, taking for yourself a wife. So he sent uh, out uh, his men uh, on a uh, quest to find a suitable wife who uh, was beautiful, intelligent, and the daughter of a nobleman. So no small task. And they found this person in the country of Greece. And her name was Sophia, the daughter of the king of Greece. I even asked the king for his daughter's hand in marriage, and he uh, said yes, on one condition. Uh, that Ivan be baptised into uh, the Greek Orthodox Church. Ivan agreed to this condition and set out with uh, uh, 500 of his best men uh, to marry so Sophia. And when they discovered that Ivan was to be baptised, the soldiers said that they wanted to be baptised as well. And the requirement of baptism uh, was to make a profession of faith and to affirm the articles of the Orthodox Church, which the soldiers agreed to, except for one. The article they couldn't affirm was the one which prohibited them from being professional soldiers. They asked the priest if they could have some time to think over the problem of how to join the church and at the same time remain soldiers in Ivan's army. So they devised a plan amongst themselves and announced that they were ready to be baptised and they marched on the morning of the baptism out into the water, 500 of them, with 500 priests. And uh, as the priests put the soldiers under the water, each soldier grasped his sword and lifted it high out of the air. The soldiers were baptised completely except for their swords and their fighting arms. And those who witnessed this mass, mass baptism uh, said it was an amazing spectacle to see 500 dry arms clasping, hold tightly to their swords, sticking out of the water. And in fact, the soldiers had decided that they would give all of themselves to the church except for their fighting arms and their swords. These would remain in the possession of the state. Some of us, I suspect, are today are, are no different to those soldiers. Um, we want all the benefits of be becoming a Christian or being a Christian uh, in our lives. Uh, to be part of God's family, the church, uh, but we want it on our own terms. So we come to Christ with one arm out of the water. In our hands, we hold on to those things that we are unwilling to let go of. Maybe it's possessions, or our time, or our money, our friends, or even our bad habits. But Paul writes, in Romans chapter 12, I urge you in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. What Paul here is saying is that we must offer uh, to God our whole selves, not just part of us. And in return, God has good, pleasing and perfect plans for his children. He wants us to be transformed people with renewed minds, living to honour and obey him. And because he wants us to be transformed people, he only wants us to have the very best in life. And he, because he gave his son to make our new lives possible, we should joyfully give ourselves as living sacrifices to his service. I wonder what part of your life have you been unwilling to give to God? What is the unbaptized arm in your life? God never promises easy or simple things in life. 
God's focus is elsewhere. God wants faith and commitment. God wants us to put our whole self in. And the Jesus who asks much also gives much. Sam Shoemaker was uh, a Christian minister who uh, began or founded, uh, or helped found, I should say, Alcoholics Anonymous. And he described the first step that an alcoholic must take to turn his or her life around. He said, make an act of surrender. Do this with another if it will help rivet it. And it will very well likely will. But make it. Gather up your sins and needs. Put them together. Bring them to Christ for forgiveness and help. Commit yourselves to him in an act of dedication. Commit yourself. Years ago, a friend or a group of friends and I were uh, uh, doing some outdoor orientation and one of the things that we had to do was learn how to climb. And I remember coming to this rock face and the instructor saying, right, you have to go up there. And there was great protests from everybody concerned uh, that we just walked over hill and dale for goodness, uh, most of the day and were exhausted. But anyway, he was quite insistent. So I and another guy went up the rock face first. Now, the, the rock face was, was fine to certain, it must have been about 100 or 150 feet high, but it sort of went out a bit towards the end. So the end, you had to lean backwards almost in order to get to the, to the very top. So off we went. And when we got to the top, the instructor said, now lean back. And my friend says, you've got to be joking. Have you seen what height we are up here? He says, no, you've got to lean back. Let go. My friend had a harness on him just the same as me and a rope. But you had to wonder if they were going to hold or not. And finally, both of us let go. And the instructor brought us safely to the ground. Letting go was the key. Putting our faith in the instructor was the key to eventually stamping on uh, terra firma at the bottom. And boy, it felt good after all that. Faith is a bit like that. They say, let go and let God. Letting go is the hard part. Letting go of things that we rely on for security. Letting God take the wheel to take us where we need to go. Learning to want to go where God leads. That's the challenge of a lifetime. When Jesus came to see John the Baptist in the wilderness, uh, John was preaching a message of repentance and he was calling people to repent of sins and be baptised. But of course Jesus was the only person not to have sinned, the only person not to need repentance and yet he asked John uh, if he would baptise him. For 2,000 years people have asked why he did that. Why did Jesus want to be baptized when he, he hadn't sinned? When he had no need of repentance? And perhaps the answer to that question is that he was leading by example. He wanted us to be baptized. And so he was baptized himself. He wants us to put our whole self in. And so he put his whole self in. Baptism is about commitment. It's about putting our whole selves in. It's about saying to God, here I am. Make me what you want and send me where you will. Paul described baptism as a death and a rebirth. 
And Jesus wants us to die to our old self so that he can recreate us in a new life. Paul says, Don't you know that all who were baptised in Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? We were buried therefore with him through baptism to death. That just like Jesus was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we also might walk in newness of life. For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, we also will be part of his resurrection. How could anybody ask for more than that? That we die. There's commitment. But yet, how can anyone give more than that? A whole new transformed life. Not just in this world, but in the world to come. And that's what Christ ultimately promises to those who follow him. I wonder today, where are you with Christ? What are you willing to give to him? An hour on a Sunday, perhaps? A few euros now and again? He wants an awful lot more than that. Ultimately, he wants your heart. And if you give him your heart, he'll take it away to his heavenly workshop and repair the breaks, and then he'll give you your heart back, strong and new. Today, if you've been baptised, whether as a, an infant or later on, there's an invitation here for you to review your baptism and your relationship to Christ. Have you given him what you promised at baptism? Have you really given him the opportunity to make something wonderful of you? If not, think of what you're missing. Give your heart to Christ and surrender yourself to him. Let him make more of you than you could ever make of yourself. And if you've not given your whole self to Christ, then perhaps these following words would be good words to say to Christ. Give me a new heart, O Lord. Put a new spirit within me. Take away my heart of stone and give me a heart of flesh. Amen. Now we come to the, the portion of our service known as the confession. Compassion and forgiveness belong to the Lord our God, though we have rebelled against him. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you, and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us and help us for behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us and help us for failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us, save us and help us for letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us, Save us and help us. And so may the God of love bring us back to himself. Forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we come to the portion of our service where we say together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we've moved location to Drumcliff Church where 
Earlier in the week we had a service of thanksgiving for the life of, of Frances Barber, so we, we will include her in our prayers. So let us pray for ourselves and for others. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, on this first Sunday of Lent, we come together to worship you, to praise and thank you, to seek forgiveness and to ask for renewal. Create in us a clean heart, O Lord, and put a right spirit within us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We come in the name of Christ, remembering his lonely days in the wilderness. With that in mind, we think of all those in these days who are in the wilderness of social isolation, who are enduring the pain of loneliness and separation from loved ones. We also remember how Christ wrestled with temptation and the ministry that followed when so many lives were transformed and restored. We come to pray for restoration for the sick and the suffering. Those of our parish, our community and those further afield. We pray for all those who are wrestling with illness and infirmity in body, mind or spirit. We pray for, too for those preparing for their final earthly, earthly journey and their loved ones. And of course we remember and love those who grieve today. We ask for your special blessing and for your hand to be upon them. We think of Barbara Good as she grieves the loss of her mother Jean. And of course we think too of Emily Jane and Holly Amber. Lord, we thank, thank you for the family and friends of Frances Barber who are grieving today. We think of her children. We think of Anne, Frank, Jill, Harold and Lorraine. And the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren. And all the extended Barber and Mons family. Lord, may these people and all who, who mourn find in you the strength to face tomorrow until the light of hope shall dawn again upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we turn our thoughts again to our Lord Jesus, help us to learn from his example in this Lenten season. Let us learn to search our hearts as he did, to consider your calling on our lives, to reflect on our faith, to resist temptation and commit ourselves wholly to you. And as we reflect, help us to recognize all that Jesus has done for us through his life, death and resurrection. So we may come gladly to you, confessing our sins, acknowledging our faults, accepting our weaknesses and receiving your forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Today we also come with thanks in our hearts. We give you thanks for your gift of love. With that in mind, we thank you for those who have entered into the covenant of marriage in recent days. May they be blessed in their new life together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So gracious and merciful God, we come together in our hearts, wherever we are on this first Sunday of Lent, Speak to us today and in the days ahead so that we may know you and love you better. Create in us a clean heart, O Lord, and put a right spirit within us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathering all our prayers and praises into one, we are bold to say the words our Saviour taught us, beginning with the words our Father. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My heart is filled with thankfulness to him who bore my pain, who plumbed the 
depths of my disgrace and gave me life again. Who crushed my curse of sinfulness and clothed me with his life and wrote his law of righteousness with power upon my heart. My heart is filled with thankfulness to him who walks beside, who floods my weaknesses with strength and causes fear to fly, whose every promise is enough for every step I take, sustain. filled with thankfulness to him who reigns above, whose wisdom is my perfect peace, whose every thought is love. say a thanksgiving together. Let us give thanks to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for the love of our Father, the maker of all, the giver of all good things. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lived and worked among us, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For his suffering and death on the cross and his resurrection to new life, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For his rule over all things and his presence in the world, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the Holy Spirit, the giver of life who teaches us and guides us, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the grace of the Spirit and the work of the church and the life of the world, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so as we come to near the end of our service, be with us, Lord, as we go out into the world. May the lips that have sung your praise always speak the truth. May the ears which have heard your word listen only to what is good. May our lives as well as our worship be always pleasing in your sight. For the glory of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So the Almighty and merciful Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>